Salutations, it's Kayla, or Moon, or the town crier who does more crying than distributing news. How art thou? Okay, enough of that. The subject of today's video is one that I was going to ignore, but I've been dwelling on this since the final episode of Last Twilight. Hear ye, hear ye, there is an epidemic of lazy writing at GMMTV, and the way that series ended was my final straw. Go watch Buell's video if you haven't already because girl, exactly. I couldn't have said it better. I'm not going to get into how offensive I thought the finale was because I'll just end up repeating everybody. And honestly, if you're out here deliberately speaking over people with disabilities, read the fucking room. That being said, let's talk about lazy writing. GMMTV are the pioneers of Thai BL. They gave this genre a chance when no one else would, and it panned out in their favor a hundredfold. Undoubtedly, they are the most popular company that produces BL series both locally and globally. Their mark on the industry cannot be understated. However, I feel they've gotten a little too comfortable lately, and it's time to stoke a fire under them. Listen up. I let them cook for two years straight. I gave them every seasoning in my cupboard. So tell me why the flavor is bland. We need to get back to the kitchen because we're missing a vital ingredient. Good writing. I truly mean this as constructive criticism because I respect all the directors and screenwriters who work their asses off despite the various obstacles and time constraints they're faced with. But we have to rewrite the recipe. Time skips are lazy. Airport scenes are lazy. Episode 11 breakups are lazy. Must I go on? We have to get creative here because people are tired of the same old thing. Sure, making these formulaic series is profitable, but for how much longer? These other companies are going to leave GMMTV in the dust if they don't adapt. In fact, I would argue it's already happening, with Idol Factory presenting true immersive fantasy to the genre, with Copy A Bangkok exploring the gritty underground world of sex work, and even Yin and War partnering with D-Hub House for their self-written thriller. Now don't get me wrong, just because a series brings something new to the table doesn't mean it's well written. But when directors and screenwriters take that risk, look at the outcome. People are stoked. They post about how different it is from the norm. They develop brand loyalty for your company and upcoming projects. And truth be told, it doesn't have to be the most innovative or complex series. It just needs to make sense. I guess that lazy writing is subjective, but here are some examples to clarify. Much like Last Twilight, the end of A Boss and a Babe completely flipped the message of the entire series. We see Gunn and Cher break up in episode 11, and while they're separated, Cher finishes his internship, graduates from university, and wins a video gaming competition. After stacking up all these accomplishments, he then goes running back to Gunn. In front of the whole office, he gets on his knees and says to him, we were unsuitable for each other like everyone said. And one more thing about me being a low-profile kid who always puts you into trouble. I've upgraded now. I have a future. People start to recognize me. Though I don't have as much money as you do, I'll start building my life now. To this, Gunn replies, but you left me. I wanted to pull my hair out because up until this point, the message of the series was consistent. Don't change yourself for anybody. I found this tonal shift kind of suspicious because as this series was airing, there was a lot of conversation about Cher being neurodivergent. So for the narrative to be reversed in the last 30 minutes of the series with this message of Cher having to mask himself to be suitable for Gunn was very disappointing. 
Other instances of lazy writing in this series were the sudden conflict with Gunn's mom that was introduced in episode 11, Gunn's former business partner stealing their prototype, then disappearing from the story, Cher's brother getting caught selling drugs and going to jail, then getting bailed out by Gunn and suffering no consequences, and lastly, Jack's struggle with mental health being introduced but never elaborated on beyond one scene of him taking antidepressants. Hidden Agenda is another series that suffered from the inconsistencies that come with lazy writing. I saw somebody call it Hidden Plot and I couldn't stop laughing. Here the Hidden Agenda is Joke using Zoe's crush on Nita as a means to get closer to him. And that's about it. Again, much like the previous series, the lazy writing is most apparent in the final episode. Revealing the main character's backstory in part 3, episode 12, is crazy. That confrontation scene between Joke and his family came way too late, and it made him feel like a plot device rather than his own character. I had the same critique about Last Twilight and Mulk being a plot device for Day's story. It's like all the writing capacity goes into one character's story, and the other one is just there to be a love interest. Other instances of lazy writing in this series were the situation with Nita's stalker being resolved too easily, the conflict between Zoe's parents being introduced so far into the series, and the overall amount of filler episodes that contributed nothing to the plot. Ultimately, I feel like these series have so much potential, but they suffer because GMMTV would rather stick to what's safe. Speaking of wasted potential, let's talk about dangerous romance. Similar to A Boss and a Babe, the lazy writing in this series centers around the tonal shift. One minute you're seeing the glory level school violence, and the next you're seeing everybody go shopping together. This mixture of serious issues and comedic elements was very jarring. When this series was airing, I was actually enjoying it. However, the fact that they never leaned into the dangerous part of the romance made the story feel lackluster. Again, it's that idea of GMMTV playing it safe. How are you going to have one of the main characters toting around a gun, but no real danger ever being posed to them, their family, or their boyfriend? It's like a PG-13 version of a mafia drama. Other instances of lazy writing in this series were the bullying against Otto never being addressed, Silom working as an escort for a pimp and just being able to walk away, the teacher-student relationship between Pimpha and Napdao, and all the time skips that were used in place of showing Kang Han's character development. Some other more recent GMMTV series that I feel were ruined by lazy writing are Enchante, Star in My Mind, and the majority of Our Sky 2. The reason I'm not elaborating on these ones is because either the writing was so bad that I couldn't finish them, or I just can't be bothered to care that much. Even Never Let Me Go, which I loved, suffered from plot hole after plot hole due to lazy writing. How did the richest, most publicly hated family not already have security? And why would they hire a high school age fisherman to protect their only son and heir? To this day, I have so many questions that I suspect have no answers. At least with my gear and your gown and fish upon the sky, I could see the comedic appeal of pure chaos, but when you're using another race or culture as a punchline, it doesn't get much lazier than that. In general, colorism and racial insensitivity is an ongoing problem in the BL industry, but I'll save that for another time. This might come off as harsh, but I think I'm clocking out. Wake me from my slumber when P. Ao is back with the remake of My Love Mix-Up, because at this point, he's the only one I trust. I sat here racking my brain for an hour trying to remember the last BL GMMTV produced that had a decent ending. And it's my school president. Isn't that ironic? The most formulaic high school themed BL is the one that delivered. How you ask? The writing was objectively good. 
I've noticed myself and others saying, X pairing is in this show, so I'm going to watch it, rather than, this plot sounds interesting, so I'm going to watch it. And that's indicative of a problem. When people are watching your series because they want to support their favorite actors and not because the story has kept them engrossed, you have poor writing on your hands. This point doesn't apply to just one company, but it's quite a peculiar trend, so I wanted to mention it. Between character derailment in the final episodes of a series and plot holes caused by rushed conflict resolution, lazy writing has plagued us with BLs that could have been good but fell short. GMMTV is not the only company dealing with this problem, not by a long shot, but they are the one with the most money, resources, and talent. So the fact that their BLs have been so hit or miss these past two years is concerning. And it's such a disservice to these actors when you hand them a half-assed script and expect them to save the series. Because let's be real, a lot of these series would not become popular if the pairings in them didn't have large fan bases. This too could apply to any company, but I harp on GMMTV because I believe in their ability to produce a good BL. We've had such gems with Moonlight Chicken, Not Me, A Tale of a Thousand Stars, and all the older dramas that helped them cement their place in the BL industry. I'm inclined to think this epidemic of lazy writing is happening as a result of them producing too many series at the same time. You run yourself thin when you have back-to-back -back series with no breaks in between, and that must put pressure on the production teams to get things done in a timely manner. It can be done though, and those gems I mentioned are proof. Thank you to the moon and back for watching, and thank you to my patrons for tolerating me in my intense and maniacal pit babe era. Recently, I've made my reactions and commentary to all completed series free over on Patreon, so check that out. Tell me in the comments what BL you think had an interesting premise but was poorly executed. I'm curious, and just remember to be nice to each other. My intention with these types of videos is always to help better the industry and just to make people more aware of things. So although this topic isn't as grave as others, it's still something I wanted to talk about. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys at a later date that is undetermined. Bye!